Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to implement logistic regression in Python using a scalar library. In the previous video, I have discussed what is logistic regression and how to apply logistic regression on the given data set with a numerical example. In this video, we will discuss how to implement logistic regression in Python using a scalar library. To implement logistic regression, we need to import a few libraries like matplotlib.pyplot, numpy, pandas, after importing these particular libraries, we need to import a, a train test split from this particular sklearn and dot model selection, as well as we need to import a standard scalar from sklearn preprocessing here. So this train test split is required to divide the data into training and testing part. Standard scalar is required to preprocess the data in a given range in this particular case. Also, we need to import the logistic regression model that can be imported uh, from sklearn dot linear model here. Finally, I have imported metrics from this particular sklearn so that we can calculate the score of this particular learned model in this case. Now, once you import all these particular libraries, the next part is to load the data set. Uh, to load the data set, I am using a read CVC function from this particular uh, pandas. But you can see here, I have uh, imported the modified iris2 classes. The meaning of this one is, uh, actually the iris data set contains three classes. I have converted that particular data set into only two classes. Uh, the first class is the Virginica and second one is the Versicolor here. Wherever there is a Virginica is present, I have considered it as one and wherever there is a Versicolor is there, I have considered it as zero over here. And it has uh, four uh, uh, features here, that is sepal length, uh, sepal width, petal length and petal width. So what I did is, uh, I have I read that particular data into this particular data frame called a df. Next, I have printed that particular data, well, the first five rows over here with the help of head function, just to know whether that particular data is uh, read correctly or not. If you look at this particular thing, we have four features and the target is uh, 0 or 1. 0 means it's a versicolor and 1 means it is a virginica over here. Next, I have used this particular df dot uh, shape. The, with the help of this particular thing, I will uh, get to know what is the shape of this particular data. It has written me 100 comma 5. The meaning of this one is there are 100 rows are there and there are 5 columns over here, 4 features and 1 is the target in this particular case. Once you read this particular data, the next part is to divide your data into training and testing part. That is done with the help of a train test split over here. X train, X test, Y train, Y test are the written variable. Train test uh, split will take uh, two parameters. The first one is the petal length I have considered here. I am not considering all those particular uh, features. I am considering only the petal length as the uh, x or you can say that the independent variable and the target is considered as the dependent variable here. And uh, the third parameter to this one is uh, random state is equal to zero. The meaning is anytime you execute this particular program, you are going to get the same result over here. Uh, if you want to set some different value, yes, you can set it, but you will get the same result uh, with that particular random state here. Now, once you execute this particular train test split, you will get X train X test and associated uh, the label uh, that's a target label in Y train and Y test over here. Now, uh, once you read this particular data and then convert this particular data into training and testing part, we need to standardize this particular data uh, that can be done with the help of uh, the standard scalar over here. So first, I need to create an instance of this particular uh, standard scalar and then we need to pass this particular X train to this particular uh, a scalar over here that is scalar dot fit x train in this particular case now once i do this particular thing next i need to uh, transform that particular data that is x train and x test over here x train is equal to scalar dot uh, transform and then x test is equal to scalar dot uh, transform over here what it does is it will transform uh, transform that particular data with mean is equal to zero and variance is equal to one here that is nothing but the given data will be transformed into something called as uh, the normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution over here. Now, once you uh, done this particular standardization, next is to uh, create an instance of a logistic regression model and then we need to train the model as well as the predict the label for the new examples over here. For that reason, I need to import this particular logistic regression from uh, sklearn.linear underscore model. Now, once you import this particular model that is logistic uh, regression, Next, we need to create an instance of this particular model here. That is nothing but a CLF is equal to logistic regression. Once you create this particular uh, the uh, instance here, next what we need to do is we need to pass the training data to this particular instance. That is CLF.fit. To this one, I am passing X train as well as Y train. X train is the uh, independent variable and Y train is a dependent variable over here. 
Now, once I create this particular uh, uh, fit function, I will be able to get the trained model. The trained model is again present in this particular variable called as CLF here. Now, once you uh, train that particular model, the next step is to predict the labels for the new data. Uh, first, I will uh, pass only one, uh, uh, we can say that the example, and then I will see whether it is uh, predicting correctly or not. Uh, that is x test of 0. That is a 0th example I will pass. I am just uh, doing the reshaping here. That is my 1, 2, minus 1 here. And then what I will do is I will display the predicted value. That is what I am doing in the pre uh, first case. And I am displaying the probabilities values also. Now, prediction is done as 0 here. That is a prediction is 0 means uh, it is belonging to class 0. Uh, if it returns 1, the meaning is it is belonging to class 1 over here. Now, how it is calculated that can be understood with the help of this particular predict underscore proba. What it does is it will return you the probability value. So, what are the probability values we got here? 0.52 and 0.47. Between these two, 0.52 is maximum. The meaning is the uh, probability or uh, uh, this particular probability is more than this one, which means that the prediction is equal to 0 here. If the second probability is more than the first one, the prediction will be 1 in that particular case. So, right now, uh, uh, the the prediction for the zeroth example is zero over here. Now this is how actually we can predict the label for the new example. Uh, that's a very simple thing. The next step is to measure the performance of this particular model. That can be done with some different uh, performance metrics like precision, recall, F1 score, ROC curve, and so on. Just for uh, making it simple, uh, I'll be calculating the accuracy of this particular model. That can be done with the help of this particular function known as the score here. CLF dot score, we need to pass the X test as well as the actual labels over here. It will calculate or predict the labels. Uh, those particular labels will be compared against this particular Y test and then it will calculate this particular score here. Now, uh, I have printed this particular score. I got the 0.88. The meaning of this one is 88% uh, of the examples of uh, testing uh, data were classified correctly in this case. Now, this one we will try to elaborate with the help of uh, confusion matrix in this case. Uh, I have created uh, uh, the variable called as CM that is a matrix dot confusion matrix. In this case, I have passed two parameters again that is a Y test. Y test is the actual label. CLF dot predict of uh, X test that is nothing but the predicted variables or the values. Now, uh, this particular confusion matrix will be displayed over here with the help of CM variable. What has been displayed in this particular case is if you look at this particular all, the meaning of this one is this is the total number of examples in X test. So, how many are there? 10 plus 3 plus 12, that is nothing but you can say that uh, uh, 25 examples are there here. Out of 25 examples, this 10 and this particular 12 were correctly classified. This is the true positive and this is the true negative in this particular case. This particular 3 and 0 were incorrectly classified. The meaning of this one is 22 examples were classified correctly. Out of, you can say that uh, totally 25 examples are there. The meaning of this one is we will get 88% accuracy in this particular case. So, that is what we got in this particular score also here. Now, if you look at this particular confusion matrix, you can understand how many total examples are there, how many were classified correctly and how many were classified incorrectly in this particular case. So, this is how we can implement the logistic regression algorithm in Python using scikit-learn library. I hope the concept of uh, logistic regression is uh, clear. If you like the video, do like and uh, share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.